Hi everyone, Claire Rogers here. I'm currently in Boston, but heading to Pebble Beach with TaylorMade for the 100 mile hike benefiting youth on course. I'm so excited to catch up with my scoop guest. He is a two-time NBA champion turned college golfer, J.R. Smith. JR, thank you so much for joining. Of course, absolutely. Here at Pebble Beach, we've had a good day so far. Amazing day. So, are you a big ice cream guy? I'm actually, I keep it so basic. Back in, like, I used to get always a large cup. I never liked the cone. There's always a cup or vanilla ice cream and rainbow sprinkles. So that was always my right thing. I want to hear how you became a golfer. How did you get into it? An NBA brother of mine, I never played, we, we didn't play on the same team, but we worked out in the same city. He was from Houston, I was working out in the city at the time. And Rashad Lewis, he had his first foundation event. It was a golf, like a golf outing to raise money for the kids in the community in the city. So I came out to just show support just because we worked out together and stuff like that. And I meet other, other guys who actually knew him from Houston. Uh, TJ Ford and those guys, and they were like, yeah, just come out. So I go out, just riding around, messing, like just messing around, joking on guys, essentially, like talking bad about their swings and whatnot. And, you know, just riding up to the carts and uh, the bars or whatever, drinking and just keep pushing. So for me, I was like, I'm having a great time. Like, this is amazing. And then Moses Malone, the Hall of Famer, he was like, young fella, come hit this ball or not. I, I went out there hit the ball and hit it literally a perfect drive. And I was like, there's nothing to it. Like golfing, you don't have to be an athlete essentially. And about an hour and a half later, I come back on this room and I couldn't hit the ball again. And, I, and it was literally like an addiction immediately. Like, no, I can do this. And I was seeing people laughing at me like, ah, oh, it's not as easy. And I was like, no, 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 I gotta get this. And after that, it was just, I was hooked. Did you, were there a certain people you played with when you were actively playing in the NBA? Were there teammates that you were playing with or who was your go-to for foursome or practicing? I would say I played with the majority of my time with the managers or the, like, the equipment managers or trainers and stuff like that. I had a few guys that I played with more towards the end, like Darren Williams, Kyle Korver, like guys like that were like like me, like they would bring their clubs on the road and we would play all the time and stuff like that. But for the most part, a lot of guys didn't play and they wouldn't, they weren't even intrigued to play. I mean, for me, I wasn't interested in playing at all when, when the trainers or other people were like inviting me, but it just so happened that this event that I wasn't doing anything all summer and it literally got me hooked. So I can't really fault the guys, but like at some point, like, the bubble and COVID was a huge for golf, obviously, but like even for the younger generation in the NBA, like and Jason Tatum and then John Lawrence and all of these different guys are getting into the game at such an earlier age than the majority of my peers. It, it, like myself, Andre Gandala, like we, we really were pretty much late bloomers. We weren't, you know, we were late into our tw 20s, early 30s when we really got introduced to the game. And, now it's so much of a younger sport. You see guys who are still at the top of their game, but at 21, 22, 23 years old, really harnessing it on their golf swing, and they're still superstars in the league. So it really wasn't happening like that for me, say young adult or young in pro professional years, but now so many younger guys are getting into the game. I'll let you have a bite. <laughs> no, that's all good. <laughs> This is actually good. You said hazelnut? Yeah. This hazelnut. is actually good. Chocolate hazelnut or something? Mm hmm I like it. Um, can you walk me through your decision to go back to school? Yeah. So I played, actually, do golf. I was with Ray Allen in the uh, Dominican Republic. He has a his own, he calls it a shootout, of course, because he's a shooter, like me, yeah. but. A bunch of, uh, essentially a bunch of our friends, which, well, his friends, which are now my friends, because he, he put together an amazing group of people. And we all really connected and had this really tight bond. And throughout the our rounds of the day, like we were scheduled to play 36 a day for four or five days. And throughout the rounds, I would see him go back and, you know, back and forth to his computer. and. 
Just like, Ray, what are you doing? Like, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he's got meetings or whatever else. And, but he was telling me, he's like, oh no, I'm working on my master's degree. And I'm like, you're Jesus shuttle work. Like, what do you need a master's degree for? And you literally continuously pumped in like the, the mindset of continuously getting better every single day as a human being, not so much as an athlete, not so much working on your jump shot, not working on your two dribble pull-ups or post-up game. It was just literally getting better as a man consistently every single day to where you're so well-rounded as a person to where you, ha you literally have no insecurities within yourself. You know, not so much about somebody else telling you you can't do it or you can do it or whatever else. You so much of the deep insecurities within your own self to empower yourself to, to where you feel as though you're uh, almost untouchable in a sense. And that resonated with me so strongly because I only looked at myself as a basketball player and I, I would always get so frustrated when people was like, oh, that's the basketball player, that's the basketball player. Like, no, I'm much more than a basketball player, but I, that's all I've given them to show. And he really let that, you know, he took it to me in that sense. And I, it really sunk into where like, no, I, I'm way more than a basketball player. I'm a man and I'm a man of so much integrity and thought and, and awareness of my surroundings is where I can't just be looking, my, I can't not only I can't look at myself just as an athlete, but I don't want other people and my kids to look at me just as an athlete. So when I saw that, it was literally just, it continuously changed within myself over the course of time or weeks, days, weeks, months. And I was like, no, I gotta do something about this. So that's when I just decided to go, you know, I'm gonna go back to school, get my degree, and potentially challenge myself to be better every single day. So what was the conversation like then decide to go back, how did you end up on the golf team? So, I played with Chris Paul my second year in the NBA, which is his first year. We lived like pretty much across the street from one another in Oklahoma City. And I really, really had a, a, well, have a huge bond with his brother, CJ. So we were playing golf in LA. I was with the, with the Lakers at the time. Well, just finished the championship run with the Lakers. And I was telling him that I was going to go back to school. And his initial thought was like, you know, you, you still have eligibility. I'm like, yeah, I do. And, I, and my first thought was, I'm going to go play football. And I'm 35, like, I'm 35, playing this 18 to 22 year olds in football. And he was like, no, bro, you're going to go play golf. Like, look at us. We, we love the game. We're just so passionate about it. Like, go make a change in the golf space. I'm like, yeah, really. You're not wrong, but also I'm not that good to be able to go back to college and play against. He's like, no, you're good. this is what's gonna make you better and continuously you'll be able to strive for something because you're gonna play as kids who are better than you. You're gonna continuously challenge yourself in, the, in your academics and it just makes complete sense. And I was sitting there sitting back like I took, it, it literally took me about two, three days to let it sink in because I was still under the impression like, one, I could still play in the NBA, and this was still like my dream and my calling. So I'm not done with that, but in the same sense, it was making so much sense to me when I thought about it. I was like, no, you like, I have to do this. Like, this is way bigger than, not so much me, but like, it is way bigger than just being able to go back to school, but be, also go back to school and be able to play a sport like so many other athletes thought they could, but actually did. You know, I would look at guys like Chris Winkie, who was, he wanted to go play professional baseball, and then comes back and was a Heisman as a fifth year senior. And it's like, no, you can do that in different sports. It's just a matter of if you have the, the vulnerability to go out there and, and possibly be bad. And for me, it was like, the ups, the stakes were so, so much higher, to I, I think, because golf is, such an amazing game and there's so many kids that are getting really good really fast to where there's no way I could come in there and essentially win the Heisman as a sport to where I've never really competed in. So I try to set the bar really low and just qualifying for tournaments and being able to be at a certain level before I can 
and just assume he's just gonna go out here and win tournaments and be player of the year and stuff like that. So what is like your team what was your team like the first day you show up like, guys were they prepped for you? Were they surprised? Do you have any favorite memories with them? So my teammates were they knew that I was coming. I feel like they were way more surprised at how humble I was opposed to coming in like somebody with such a big ego and just throwing their weight around. And for me, that's like how I feel like I've gained respect because I don't mind doing the freshman duties that I had to do. What those include? Just buying Gatorades and like getting getting their balls from this little ball, ball stand and stuff like that. And which was cool, but at the same time, it was gaining me, gaining the humility of my teammates and really understanding that I'm here for a bigger cause opposed to just paying quote unquote the two time NBA champ, J.R. Smith. Like, I don't, I know that, I mean, I know a few of them care about that from an aspect of just like being being a celebrity, like, yo, that's dope. Like, you're here, da, da, da. But for me, it was way more personal because I wanted them to show, I wanted to show them that I can be a regular person, you know? I don't have to always carry this title of the two-time champion or I won an award in the NBA and all of a sudden, like, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I'm playing a sport that they know, they love you, and they're, honestly just better at me than and be able to show that humility to them I feel like it sets precedent because when they're when they elite uh, reach that elite status they'll always remember me for being who I was and them treating everybody else the same way what are you studying and can you tell me about your favorite class that you're taking I study liberal studies yeah. it's an african-american uh, history degree and for me honestly like my favorite class that I've studied so far was like I forget the years in the 100 percent but I want to say it's like 1960s to like 1985 in sports African-American sport, uh, sports figures and it really gave me perspective where we came from to where we are in, in a day and age of before the Tiger Woods, before the Michael Jordans, like granted it was Magic and Kareem and those guys, but like people who really like set the bar to a different level. And for me, it's like when I sit, sit back and look at it, I couldn't really look past uh, the Michael Jordans, the Deion Sanders, the King Griffey Juniors, who like, for me, who changed my childhood. but. I started looking at it from like my dad's point of view and my grandfather's point of view, the people who really changed history and, and the Ali's, the uh, Smoke and Joe Frazier's, like the, the horse jockeys and the Kentucky Derby's. Like when I started looking, started looking back at the history of it, at, at every standpoint, African-American history and culture was there. And when I started to realize like the, our self-worth is so much higher than what we present to the general public or what's presented to the general public is, it kind of hurt me in a sense because I, I, I've i always wanted to know the history and the lineage. Like history was always my favorite subject. And to be able to know where you come from, to know how far you came, to know where how far you're gonna go is always the the obstacle and the goal, you know? And, and a lot of it is, for me, when I look around society, we look at it in lineage as so much as our in intermediate families, like literally my mother, father, son, brother, maybe, and then you're literally children. I've represented that side of, of life so well and I'm able to afford to live, have my family live such a great life. I still have cousins, aunts, uncles, and everybody else outside of that circle. So it's like, how do I just set a precedent for just people in general and continuously push forward? So that's what I just try to do every single day. Awesome, all right, so I have two more here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, 2021-2022, you were named Academic Athlete of the Year with a 4.0. You mentioned you have dyslexia, ADHD. Yeah. How did you get that done for maybe someone who has a learning difference? For me, honestly, it was memorization and uh, repetitive. Like, I was so... I would literally sit and study hall or whatnot from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Practice was 3.30. I was literally like 15 minutes away from the golf course. So it was like, I, I was still making the practice in time and everything else, but it took me hours on hours on hours. And fortunately I had a tutor, shout out to Kim Burke at NCANT, because she she was a specialist. She, well, she's a specialist in kids or I'm not, not going to say kid because I was not a kid, but like she's a specialist in people with learning disabilities. And I didn't understand, I didn't truly understand the difference between a teacher who's, you know, qualified for teaching children or students or somebody who's qualified for teaching people with learning disabilities. And for her patience and her time and to break it down the way she would, would literally break every single paragraph or sentence down to me it was refreshing because even when i was in high school and, and middle school and, and grade school i didn't have that like it was either you got to catch up you, you get it or you don't right. you got to catch up if you don't you go to special ed and they'll just throw you to the wolves and just like okay cool you're on this chart and for me like to literally take it frame by frame and learn it frame by frame. And, and if I didn't understand it, she allowed me to feel vulnerable and to like, listen, I don't, it just just doesn't make sense to me. And she was okay, well, what part doesn't make sense? And, and like, we would literally dissect it. And for me, that was like the turning point to where I wanted to learn. I had a craving to learn. And it, I feel like I excelled in so many different areas because the most insecure part of my life, I was able to conquer day by day. And throughout the days, I gained so much confidence. It was just like, oh no, I can do anything, you know? And it's different when you think you can do anything and then you overcome your uh, in, a huge insecurity to where you really feel like you're Superman. Like, I'm, I don't need a, a glass or a smoke or a... Uh, a, f a food object is just like something internal about what was going on within me to where I just felt like my power was limitless. That's awesome. So Thank great you. tutor and you yeah. ended up doing really well. So Appreciate and then it. finally, how do you think, maybe it's mentally, but golf and basketball, do you see any, any similarities there? A hundred percent. So many, like, and I was just talking to a friend about this not too long ago, and it's the similarities of a golf shot and a basketball shot. Like, essentially, you'll have your, you know, your putts, which is, like, essentially, like, your free throws. You know, you'll have your standstill shots from behind the arc or three-point line, essentially, like, your drives. But within that, you have so many different shots of the game, whether it be a bump and run, a flop shot, or or in the basketball it's a floater, or um, one dribble off the, off the pull of left, or one dribble right, a step back left, a step back right, and you have these shots in the golf, in the game of golf, to where it's like there's always an obstacle for you to overcome. And whether it be a seven footer in front of you, or whether it be a shorter guy in front of you, you gotta shoot it higher, you gotta shoot it lower, you gotta go off the glass, there's so many different shots in the game, and I feel like that's where shooters really translate it because we are able to see the shot before it even goes in and know what it takes to make that shot, especially if you spent the time and energy and effort into the, your practicing repetition. And so much of golf, I hear even from the pros, like, okay, if I take a week off, like, it just feels like I never touched a club before. And the same with in basketball, like, Granted, I know if I can go out right now being a professional as long as I've been doing it for as long as I do, if I shoot five or ten shots, like, granted, I know what I'm doing wrong, but at the same time, if I went out there and competed with a professional 
who's been playing consistently every single day, is I'm going to see a huge difference. Opposed to if I'm just out there with my boys and I can pull off a couple shots. So for me, the game of golf and, and the, or not even the game of golf, but like just the shot and the swing is so similar. Timing, the release, like follow through, the finish, there's so much of it that you hear in basketball that you, it's the same terminology as golf, it's just translated a little differently. Well, thank you so much for joining me in of this. Course. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you thank for having you. me. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Claire Rogers. If you like what you saw, you can watch more videos right here from me and the rest of the Golf.com team. Make sure to subscribe below and turn your notifications on.